Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome back to the Cubase Fundamentals course. Today we're going to transition from songwriter to mixer. This is um, a pivotal moment in the songwriting process and how much of a one-way gate it is, is really going to be up to you. There's lots of decisions that you have to make as to how you're going to mix a song. That's what we're going to talk about today. Just before we kick off on all of that, have a look at the Patreon link uh, down below if you want to help support my channel. That's a great way to do it. Alternatively, you can click the join button to become a YouTube channel member. Thanks to everybody who has so far. Now then, one of the big problems that we've got is that we've got a load of VST information at the moment, which means that the CPU is burdened with the generation of these sounds. It's difficult to see what the actual audio output is from those sounds because they're rendered in MIDI. And in the case of the rhythm track, it's particularly compounded by the fact that we've got multiple different sounds all embedded on the same track. And of course, yes, we can look at the MIDI part itself and see the, the drum parts from, from this perspective, but that's really not what we want. We want a dedicated track for our kick so that if we want to do processing on the kick, you know, it's completely there. When we're in the mixing process, we want a different view on the world. Now, how you perform your file management going into this process is up to you. You could file save new version, and then and that would create a project called project one dash zero one, and basically create a brand new um, CPR file, a Cubase project file on your hard drive. But all of the audio, all of the files that are used by the project will still be common. I personally prefer to take a backup. I'll copy the entire project folder, give it a date stamp, maybe a description of something that helps me identify that particular version. Pre-mix, you might choose to call it. Put that away safe, you know, and then you've got a completely unsullied copy of the project that cannot be damaged in any way. That's what I've done for today. So I've now got a base camp. If I make a complete mess of the entire mixing project, I can always come back to this stage with the VST instruments exactly as you see it right now. Because a lot of the stuff that we're going to do today is destructive in terms of throwing things away. Some of these gates are a little bit difficult to get back through once we've traveled through them. First thing that I'm going to do is turn the Groove Agent track into multiple channels. Now, this is a little bit beyond the conversation today. GA5 has a particular feature in it that you can actually export the entire drum kit into the Cubase mixer. It's this option down here, export mixer and FX to Cubase. And now when I drop my uh, outputs tab down, you can see that we've got multiple different tracks that's all still MIDI, it's all still being processed by the VST instrument, but this is just a feature of Groove Agent 5. I think only the full version has this, has this feature, but it is great. The slow hand version of it is by activating outputs. That's what Groove Agent's done for me behind the scenes. And you can see that I've got all these multiple different outputs routed to different channels now. Different VST instruments have different types of outputs. So for instance, here we have a, a Hallian instance it has 16 outputs, as you can see, and you can route different VST instruments to those different outputs. But that's a little bit beyond what we want to talk about today. That's stage one. The next thing that I want to do is completely initialize the mixer. Every pan setting or volume setting I've made in the project to date, I'm going to throw all of them away. I'm going to go into my mix console, and there's only one easy way to do this in Cubase. What you have to do is select the leftmost track in your mixer, then press the shift key on your keyboard and press the rightmost track on your mixer. Because of this curtain, it's actually very difficult to select all of the tracks simultaneously if you don't do that. Then we want to engage these options. You can see that I turned them on because I was practicing earlier. You want to engage Q-Link, which is going to link all of the tracks together. Any operation I perform on a single track is going to be executed on every track. I also want to choose absolute mode because what I'm going to do is choose one of the tracks, type naught, hit enter. That's going to initialize every track to exactly zero. Do the same with my pan settings. You can choose any of them, just type C, hit enter, and it sets every pan setting to central. So that's my mixer completely flat. I'm going to be careful not to press play at the moment because the entire song would be way, way too loud. I also happen to know, because like I said, I was doing a little bit of a practice earlier, that the piano backing chords track is a little bit quiet. I'm just going to give that a bit of a volume boost. And the bell melody 
is very quiet. I'm going to give that a bigger volume boost. It doesn't really matter. It just means that when it renders, I'm going to have an inherently bigger audio signal to play with. You'll see very shortly. And now we're going to render all of the VST tracks in the project. I'm going to select my locators for reasons you're going to see in a second. Head up to File, Export, Audio Mixdown. And here in the bottom left hand corner, the export range is the locators. That's why I did that. By default, we're going to have channel selection set and it's going to be set to stereo out. We want to choose multiple because we're going to manually pick the tracks that we're going to export. Only the VST tracks need to be converted to audio. Your audio tracks are already audio, so you don't need to worry about them. Now, our virtual choir that we created earlier is actually instruments. So we want all of them because we want them to be audio. I want my three keyboard lines. And I also want all of the drum outputs. This rhythm track here, I'm not bothering with because that's the original raw MIDI data from the Cubase output. I've already split it into multiple um, individual instances. So I don't need the, the base like collected track. And now we need to choose these project options. File name is project one. That's correct. It's absolutely fine. Path. I choose project mixdown folder. So it's going to create a separate folder on my hard drive called mixdown. And it's going to store all of these audio files there. For conflicts, I say always overwrite. For the file format options, you can see that we've got audio wave options, and these are the same as my current project settings. Effects, I'm going to output any inserts and strip. At this point in the in the songwriting process, you shouldn't have any inserts or strip settings. We might have added a couple. I'm, I'm going to live with it. But while you're writing the song itself, you want to try to keep your audio, your, your instrument tracks as clean as possible. We'll perform all of those processes during the mixing phase. That's what it's all about. This is a really important option. After export, you're going to have to choose create audio track. We want to see the audio data in our project. And I'm going to give it a pool name of Mixdown. And that's it. I can click export audio. This will mute my microphone while it's doing this. And now if we scroll down to the bottom of the project, there they all are. I inadvertently left stereo out turned on. That was just a mistake. Let's get rid of that. But the rest of the audio tracks are here. There's my choir, four, four part choir. And here are my VST instruments, now with big healthy audio signals. If you did it without those little volume boosts, you'd see much smaller audio outputs there. In fact, some of the drum lines, like the hats for instance, are actually quite quiet, but that's okay. You know, hats usually are quiet. I'm, I'm prepared to live with that. If you want to boost them a little bit, you, you've always got your gain staging inside each of the individual audio tracks by clicking up. Uh, click in the little white box and boost in them that way. But we'll worry about all of that stuff when we actually get on to the fundamental mixing process. At the moment, we're just in preparation mode. Now, one of the unfortunate consequences of doing that um, Groove Agent export is that it absolutely screws with your mixer settings. It creates group tracks and does all sorts of shenanigans. I'm going to basically rearrange the entire project um, very shortly. We're just going to get all of our housekeeping out of the way first. Just for the moment, I'm going to close my mixer down so that we can see the project more easily. Okay then, from here down to here is now useless. We have audio rendered versions of all of these tracks. So we don't need the original VST instruments anymore. And that means we can get rid of them. Now you could permanently purge them from the project, but I think that's too extreme. That means that if you ever want to go in and edit a single note, go back into the MIDI and perform any edits on the on the, the instrument itself, you're kind of screwed, you can't. So what I prefer to do is to disable the tracks. If I right click, disable track, it's gonna um, shut this VST down so that it's not got any CPU overhead and it's also gonna remove it from the mixer. Just open the mixer up again so that we can see our VST instruments. I'm gonna choose disable and now it's removed it from the mixer. It's still visible in the project window. Don't worry about that, we'll sort it shortly. So now I can choose the other three instruments, disable them as well, 
and now all of those VST instruments have been removed from our mixer. But I'm still left with these tracks kind of hanging around. A couple of things we can do. We could head into the visibility tab and turn them off. That's absolutely fine, totally reasonable. What I generally tend to do, just to remind me what I've done, is to create a folder called Disabled. I put the instruments in there. I can close the folder. I can still see it in my main project, so I know there's something there, but it's not having any visual impact on me at all. I can't see it anywhere else. Oops, needed to do that with my choir tracks as well, didn't I? The next thing I want to do is to remove any silence from any audio in these tracks. Can you see the Tom's track, for instance, is the entire length of the song. Whatever my locators were, it's created an audio file of exactly that size. But as you can see visually, there's very little audio data in that track. Fortunately, there's a great little feature that we can use to sort exactly that problem. I'm going to choose all of my audio in the entire song. So I, mean, I could have clicked Control A, just the same thing. Then I'm going to go into Audio, Advanced, Detect Silence. And this is a magical little feature. I have my threshold set to around about minus 70 dB. It's currently set to some weird number, not exactly sure why. It doesn't particularly matter. It's basically almost silent. That's the critical thing, almost but not quite. What this process is going to do is basically detect silence in the audio and cut, cut, delete. So it's going to basically remove from the audio event any silence. I give a pretty healthy headroom two seconds either side of the silence. Pre-roll pre and post-roll arbitrarily add an extra 100 milliseconds onto all of this stuff. And then these bottom, these options in the bottom right-hand corner, you want to choose all of these. Strip silence, yes. Process all selected events, yes. Do it automatically, yes. And just get on with it. Now, it is worthwhile just doing a little bit of double checking on the audio that it's processed, just to visually confirm that it hasn't done anything crazy. Say for instance, it's deleted the entire percussion track. I happen to know there was no audio percussion. If you go back 30 seconds in the video, you'll see that the percussion track was actually silent. It's got that right. And so I can get rid of the percussion track. It doesn't need to be there. Here are our little stubs of toms. If we really drill in and make this nice and big, you can see that it's done absolutely no harm to the audio at all. There's where it finishes. There's my tail. Okay, we're doing really well. All we have to do now is clean the song up and get a little bit of order back into our lives. So I'm gonna pick my master bus up, throw that back up to the top, stereo out. Similarly, set them all to one high and then recolor all of my tracks. Choir is going to be pink. Keyboard lines are going to be green. Drum lines are going to be blue. I've got a vocal reverb that is in use. This guitar delay never actually ended up being used, so I'm going to throw it away. I now have two empty group tracks, which I can also throw away. And then we've got this interesting thing with the kit mix. Again, this is a feature of Groove Agent. When it does its mass export, it exports them to this group track. Well, I've already got a track called Rhythm Master. So now I've got a couple of choices available to me. If we just have a look at what's going on with those two tracks, we can discuss the various options on how we want to proceed. So you can see the kit mix actually has EQ and strip settings assigned to it. So there's stuff here that I don't want to lose. This is Groove Agent's balanced, mixed drum sound. I might choose to throw it away, but I might not. So this is the point in the song where I could audition those two tracks and listen to them side by side. But for now, I'm going to kind of put my trust in Groove Agent and say, OK, I presume that what you've done was reasonable. What I can do is right click on the EQ tab, say copy EQ settings, paste them over to my um, master rhythm track. Then open my strip, copy and paste. Then I'm going to need to go through my mixer, left to right, making sure that all of my routings are correct. And as you can see, they're not. I'm just going to come out of absolute mode, but I'm going to leave it in Q-Link. 
select my choir tracks, route those to Vocal Master. Got my instrument tracks, go into Keys Master, all of my drums, to Rhythm Master. All of my other routings are correct. I no longer need Q-Link anymore. I'm going to turn that off so that I don't forget that it's on and I can throw that kit mix track away. This gray uh, group track folder isn't particularly the way I work, so I'll throw that away. And we are go for launch. If I now just drop the master output down and play a little bit of this song, you can see that some of the audio levels are way out. Everything's been maxed. It's completely understand it's understandable that some of the audio levels are out. The fact is that that's the beginning of our mixing process. We've got a completely blank template now. We can see all of our audio and we're ready to go. And we'll embark on that process in the next episode. Hope you enjoyed this one. Please hit uh, like if you did. I'll see you then.